Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, good to see you. I hope everyone is doing well. And uh, yes, today is uh, Monday. It's a really big holiday, actually, in the United States. Uh, good morning, all of you. Let me check um, the chat. Good morning, Jose. Good morning, Salsa. Good morning, Richard, Eugene, David, uh, Bernie, uh, Ernie. And uh, uh, all of you who connected on Facebook and connected on uh, YouTube, on the Twitch, uh, everywhere. Let me know if um, you can hear me okay, if you... I mean, the sound is good, the video is good, the quality is good, and so on. I highly encourage you, if you connected me on a Facebook or Twitch or other platforms, just to go to my YouTube channel, okay? Uh, it's much better. And, uh, you know, I think the quality is much better, actually. I can stream in a 1080, 60 frames per second. And if you knew and you don't know who am I, my name is um, Alexander Grabovetsky and I'm a, a wood carver. And uh, don't forget, before too late, just uh, give me some love, okay? Just uh, give me some love and uh, subscribe, uh, like the video. And if you don't like my videos, just, you know, just get out, okay? Just get out. Uh, so you don't have to, you know, just uh, put any negative stuff uh, on my channel. Don't like it, just walk away, okay? But anyway, so don't forget, uh, if you are still not subscribed, I highly encourage you to subscribe and hit that uh, bell notification for you wouldn't uh, uh, miss any notifications. Uh, let's um, let's start, okay? Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. Let me see whom I'm uh, uh, missing. Edgardo, buenos dias. And uh, Richard, Mark, so all the same guys. So are, are you not celebrating today or... What's going on? I mean, you're not supposed to miss a uh, holiday, right? That's a big holiday anyway. So, and uh, yes, uh, it's a big holiday, not only in the United States, but uh, all over pretty much the world. Uh, I mean, those people who surfed and, um, you know, in different countries and so on. I mean, uh, my two grandfathers, they were fighting in uh, three wars, pretty much. Uh, in three wars, uh, one of them was a high-ranked officer, a really high-ranked officer. But anyway, uh, today's subject, Denise, добрый день. Today's subject, I tried, I tried sandpaper, okay? And that is uh, controversial for me, okay? Because uh, there's a two clans of people in wood carving world okay and some people say no 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 you're not supposed to do any sandpaper you're not uh, you know you're not supposed to sand that smooth and so on uh, you're supposed to get uh, all the finishes just out of the chisel uh, out of the chisel that's the only way out of the chisel by the way it's uh, when you don't use anything uh, just the gouges and so on and that's uh, one of the ways uh, 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 to do the finished product with, in, uh, in wood carving. Let me show you. Uh, let me show you. Let me show you what I want to show you. I want to show you this this one, okay? So, uh, this one, uh, uh, this project, I'm not planning. I'm not planning to send or anything, okay? But I do have a, a small project uh, from school. Okay, School of um, Woodworking, uh, Mark Adams, uh, we did last year, and uh, I, I, I kind of like that, uh, what we've done, uh, and uh, some of you actually, Mark, uh, Mark, uh, you were there and you were uh, doing that project, okay, and uh, this year I did not finish it also, I mean, uh, yeah, a lot of people who took the class did not finish, but yes, that project was done in a school uh, of uh, woodworking, Mark Adams School, and we did uh, Byzantine style carving. It's a really, really unique 
style, uh, really intricate style, beautiful style, I would say. Uh, lots of Orthodox churches, uh, not only in uh, Greece, but all over the Europe, actually. I should say probably just the Eastern Europe, uh, they do that style of a carving. And that style is um, designed for the gold leafing, okay? So in mind, before they carve, they, they actually have to think about how they're going to gold leaf it, how they're going to get inside. I mean, and uh, uh, in this particular one, it has a deep excavation and how you can place uh, gold leafing. It's not just the gold leafing. You have to think, uh, uh, you know, like uh, the final product. OK, and uh, in this case, uh, what they did, and we're talking about a long time ago, well, long time ago, let me actually show you that uh, a little closer to you. So, a uh, long time ago, uh, they uh, developed the idea that surface is supposed to be really smooth. Okay, so, and I mentioned uh, there's uh, two types of uh, approaches to wood carving, and one of the approaches is just uh, out of the chisel. Okay, so when you see all the marks and the uh, uh, whatever you do, uh, whatever the technique you do uh, to make it uh, somewhat smooth, I can show you one of the techniques uh, out of the chisel. Uh, when you take a gouge and uh, you can see all those faucets, uh, you know, on the background right here, uh, the tool marks. And what you do, you just do, uh, I'm just exaggerating my movement, but you just are rising right on the top of um, those ridges and you make that. Uh, surface really really clean and nice okay of course i'm doing that in a slow motion but you can achieve really nice uh, and beautiful result by that okay so you can just uh, make it really 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 clean and nice and beautiful and i should say i should say that is probably my uh, preferred method of uh, finishing wood carving just to do out of the chisel Okay, so it gives me really nice and uh, beautiful result. Okay, and uh, I usually don't touch sandpaper in all. But I do have uh, emails. Uh, I've got lots of emails actually in the past. Uh, one particular guy, I mean, uh, one of the guys actually, he wrote me uh, when he is uh, looking at some of the pictures online done by some uh, Eastern European carvers and that just looks so smooth. How is it possible to do that so smooth? And the answer is easy. Those guys actually using sandpaper, okay? And uh, they just sand that really smoothly uh, and it looks beautiful, okay? Again, like I said, there's the two clans of, uh, of wood carvers. Uh, one clan saying absolutely no, 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 you're not supposed to use any sandpaper. And another clan saying, yes, why not? I mean, uh, uh, you should use a sandpaper. And it looks beautiful, actually. You can actually reveal uh, nicer shadows because the shadow casting is actually a lot smoother. And I don't know. Uh, I, uh, uh, my personal opinion, I, I probably gonna touch both sides. I know in United States, uh, wood carvers they they love sandpaper. In UK, uh, wood carvers they don't like sandpaper. In uh, Italy, wood carvers they use sandpaper. In uh, China, and uh, by the way, I mean, all over the world, if you look even in Chinese wood carving, uh, what they've done, uh, it's beautiful wood carving. Even in a palace, the main building, uh, there's actually the whole wall in China uh, done by hand. One of the wood carvers, he actually done it. And uh, if you look close to that picture, uh, all surfaces actually sends it absolutely smooth absolutely shiny okay and that's uh, when you look at those works you just uh, wonder uh, is it wrong to send am i supposed to use uh, only out of the chisel uh, finish and uh, what side is uh, right what side is uh, not right 
And my answer, my take on that, there's no wrong uh, sides. I mean, uh, uh, it's, uh, it, let, let me tell you just uh, in my case, okay? Yes, personally, I love uh, tool marks. Personally, I love uh, when I look at my work and uh, I see those tool marks. It's just like a brush marks, like a fine art. And uh, every tool mark makes uh, like a ridge, extra ridge of a diamond almost. And that just looks beautiful. And the uh, light and shadow play, it's beautiful. That my uh, probably preference okay uh, i i really love uh, uh the finish and uh, you can look uh you know some of my work previously i showed uh, like those flowers and stuff like this there's no sandpaper whatsoever okay but i do have a clients i'm i'm not just uh working for myself and uh, when i do have a clients i really i you know i really have to i really have to uh, just to satisfy what the client asks and uh, if the client client asks me to smooth it and send it yes I will send it okay I will do that and uh, uh, for example one of you asked me why would you use a you know on this project particular project uh, you know on this one uh, paint I'm gonna paint this one okay so that is gonna be paint great and I'm going to use a chuck paint and I've got email why would you use a chuck paint if you can stain it yes I can stain it but it's not what the client asks okay uh, so the client actually asked me to paint that particularly it's supposed to be authentic to uh, Italy Venus you know 15th 16th century paint job okay so that is why I really don't have to worry about uh, this project to make it smooth uh, and uh, I can leave all the tool marks with no problem even some spots I can do somewhat uh, rough I would say and that's still gonna be just uh, covered with the paint and uh, the chuck paint is beautiful thing actually uh, the chuck paint gonna penetrate uh, really deeply and uh, some of the grain still going to be revealed you're still going to be able to see uh, some of the grain of the wood it's still going to be beautiful still going to be really really beautiful but that is just uh, about that project but like i said uh, i'm working on a different projects and uh, i i just showed you this project uh you know it's a byzantine style carving and you know for the gold leafing it's a good idea to actually use a sandpaper and they developed they developed actually uh, not the sandpaper of course they did not have that in Byzantine Empire uh, Orthodox Byzantine Empire uh, sandpaper they use different techniques uh, they they would cover that with the clay first and then they would use a rush okay if you don't know what the rush let me pull if I have it somewhere and yes, I should have it. Uh, I'm talking about um, reed rush. The, it's a plant by the river. It's uh, like like a tube, like this. So they that's what they use. They would just ascend it, and that rush is actually equal to about uh, uh, 400 grit, I would say, sandpaper. That's what they used. Okay, and I'm using that also uh, pretty much. Uh, if you part of my school. Uh, so uh, I'm using that a lot actually even on a furniture uh, on the furniture panel uh, one of the projects I'm still working on okay uh, I'm still uh, using uh, authentic technique and uh, yes they did actually send it it wasn't sent paper they used uh, you know whatever they had uh, you know stuff like this just a read rush but they they did send it and even the famous uh, wood carvers uh, uh even in england uh, in england it's actually uh, common not to send but even in england i mean the most famous wood carver Glenn gibbons you know when you look at his work really closely you can see the lines you know on the work which actually left by the reed rush okay so he actually used the reed rush just exactly the same what i just showed to you so to yes i mean he did send his work okay nothing wrong about it so but anyway oh yes absolutely so that is just exactly what i just said okay that is uh, 
white fire Keith Richard, I believe, right? So, uh, so that is exactly what he used uh, as a sandpaper. And not only, I mean, Glen Gibbons, I mean, the, there's a lot of woodcarvers, uh, not only in England, uh, you know, in Germany, you know, in uh, Holland, in other countries, in European countries, they use that uh, reed, you know, reed brush for the sensing. Even like I said in Byzantine, we're talking about long, long, long time ago. So we're talking about like 1500 years ago, they, they used that sensing technique for they would apply the gold leafing uh, after that. So, but uh, now, nowadays, um, uh, nowadays, I mean, I don't need to use uh, on all of my projects uh, Read Rush. Yes, I do use it, uh, and I love it. I love it, and like I said, if you're part of my school, so you should know that I'm using that all the time because it doesn't have a uh, abrasive inside, which is leaving any abrasive inside of the fibers. That's what I love about it. Okay, so now, uh, so. I probably should tell you why people don't like to use sandpaper and why people like to use sandpaper. Uh, let me explain you the fears uh, why people don't like to use sandpaper. So the fear, probably the biggest fear, I would say, uh, just um, the biggest reason uh, when you're sanding with the sandpaper, when you're sanding with the sandpaper, if you're using just a normal sandpaper and you try to sand that, uh, you know, it does have an abrasive uh, on inside, okay? And uh, it's actually uh, you pushing that abrasive inside, and no matter how expensive sandpaper you get, you still get some abrasive inside of the wood. And uh, if you're using gouge right after that, so uh, your gouge is going to become dull. I mean, uh, I mean, it's it's truth. It's honest truth. It's going to be dull. It's going to be uh, actually dulling your tools. So that is why one of the problems, um, uh, people who don't like sandpaper, uh, why they don't use it, okay? So because it just affects the tools. Okay, second, it actually eliminates those uh, chisel marks or gouge marks or veiner marks or V-tool marks, whatever the marks you're leaving right there, okay? And yes, you know, like I said, it actually makes uh, wood carving unique you know, those uh, marks. But it's not too legit. Okay, what I'm trying to explain to you, why would you use a tool after sandpaper? Duh, I mean, you use a sandpaper after you carve and finish already with the carving process. And then you sand it and then you make the surface smooth and shiny if you wish. Okay, uh, by the way, I, I mentioned uh, UK wood carvers. There's a song UK wood carvers, they, they, you know, just send it to depth. I, I mean, to smooth. <laughs> okay, so they do that uh, and they love it also. Just, just <clears throat> not to reveal the um, grain of the wood. It's not necessarily for that, but uh, it's just a preference, personal opinion. Okay. And like I said, if you're afraid of uh, doling your tools, uh, use your brains. Don't use your tool after you send. But even if you have to use the tool after you send, I mean, after the sensing process, and you make your tool dull, just resharpen it, okay? So it's not a big deal just to take it on a buffing wheel or on a stropping wheel or just on a normal stropper and just uh, restrop it and the tool is going to be good again okay uh, hi michael hello 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 everyone I, whom i missed okay let me see if i missed uh, some uh, chat okay uh michael uh is asking, well, it's not Michael, it's uh, Mikhail Honduras, or Honduras, uh, really enjoying your opinion on ideas and design. Do you plan on teaching the design and carving of human figure, form, face, 
uh, maybe in future, yes, I will, uh, but I need to get done, uh, you know, ongoing projects. Uh, I probably will. Uh, but uh, that lion uh, uh, corbels, uh, the huge ones, uh, I am, pl I I've got all the footage, I've got all the videos, but I need to edit that. So, so that is going to be available uh, in my school, schoolofwoodcarving.com. Okay, so now, so put that aside. Sandpaper, dolls, you tools, it does not if you use your tool wisely. So step by step, use your tools and the second step you send. So the question today, uh, the question today, yes, I tried uh, sandpaper on my wood carving. And uh, my question is what sandpaper is best for wood carving? okay uh, what brand is the best and uh, what um, uh, the base for the sandpaper is the best i'm talking about uh, you know there's a different sandpaper and uh, some of them has uh, a paper back some of them has a uh, uh, velcro back and uh, so on and so on okay so which one is the best okay and the answer is actually easy the answer is easy Okay, uh, all of them gonna work. It all depends on operation. And uh, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna probably take you uh, to my, uh, you know, whatever the Byzantine uh, acanthus, and we're gonna try, uh, try together if it's okay with you, okay? We'll try to get, let me see if I missed something. Paul is saying, my wife always wants me to send my work, but I now have the workshop and the buffing pad for it. Yeah, beautiful. Shirley say, uh, asking, do you have a preferred brand? That is exactly uh, what I'm going to talk about. Michael uh, asking about, uh, well, not asking. He's actually saying, I have a nice haircut. Yes. Yes, Florida is open now. That is a blessing for me. Actually, it was open last Monday, and the last Monday, on a day number one, when they opened, uh, you know, you know, all the places for the haircut, I just went and just got my haircut. Okay, because I was my hair growing like uh, you know really uh, quickly, you know, really <laughs> fast, and uh, you know, you saw me just on last uh, stream. I was uh, with the long hair. Yes. Thank you very much, Michael. Love you too. By the way, don't forget to give me some love, okay? Like my video, okay? And uh, leave some comments also below. Carl. Okay, now, uh, <laughs> uh, Carl is saying, let's go for two hours today since uh, it is a holiday. Yeah, right. Yes, it's a holiday, but I'm working today, okay? No, I'm not cooking today. I'm not grilling today. My my children, yes. I mean, my son-in-law, he's got some shish kebab and some, uh, uh, you know, some other stuff he's going to cook on the grill, but not uh, not me. I have to concentrate on my <laughs> real work on this one, okay? So that is what I'm going to do after I've done with the live stream. But uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to work with you uh, uh, today a little bit on this piece okay so uh we're gonna try together what is best if it's okay with you just uh, let me know if it's okay with you if you're gonna uh, try different sandpapers and uh, we'll work on it okay so like i said that is gonna be this piece i'm not gonna use any clamps i'm not gonna use uh, any you know pads or anything of course I, I mean i could i mean it's nothing wrong with that i could actually put uh, a couple, uh, you know, even uh, those uh, cookies, and it's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna stay stable. But I really don't need to. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, just uh, simple stuff. Okay, okay. Now, so my preference. Uh, I tried different ones. Uh, I tried uh, different brands. I tried cheap, and uh, I can tell you my opinion. Uh, that, for example, is a 3M uh, brand uh, you can buy in any hardware store. 
uh, like Home Depot, Lowe's, if uh, you live in the United States, it's uh, really cheap, but I really hate that, okay? I really don't like that. The problem is, uh, like I mentioned before, abrasive actually sticks inside of the fibers and it's really, really hard to get this out. Not because of the tool uh, uh, I'm going to use after. I'm not going to use the tools, but it still doesn't give me as uh, nice of a, a finish. Yes, I believe uh, if that idea, so you getting what you pay for, applies to sandpaper also. So 3M sandpaper is not my preference, okay? Although there's a like i said it's one of the cheapest options and you can get a lot of different grids and really cheaply so like uh, for example right there is a 3m and a 120 grid and uh, again uh, it, it's claiming it's no sleep grip yes it is it's a beautiful beautiful no sleep grid uh, on the back side you, so uh, when you're rubbing your fingers you know you can just uh, not sleeping that that is a really good but I don't like the finish it leaves, okay? And I tried the uh, uh, sandpaper by Fast Tool, and that let me try to find one, if I'll find, because I don't use it anymore. Yes, I, I've got one, okay? So that is uh, the old uh, uh, Fast Tool 100 grit with the Velcro on the back side. Uh, that is probably one of the best, I would say. As far as the sandpapers, uh, it's a by fast tool. Uh, why I like it because you can roll it easily, and it just uh, stays whatever the shape you roll it, and uh, you can um, sand it. Okay, so it gives me really beautiful results, actually really nice results, and it does not leave too much uh, abrasive on inside. You can see. It's actually just a sanding and doesn't leave uh, almost anything on the side. Gives me really nice result. And that is, uh, if you're going to compare that to 3M, it's a lot more expensive sandpaper. And that's, and that's made um, uh, for the Rotex uh, fast tool tool, I mean sander, which I have uh, a couple of them. I've got small version and I've got big version and I've got actually even a smaller one, a really small, like three inch also. So there's a 125 millimeters, uh, there's 150 millimeters and, uh, and a small one, of course. Okay. So see, that is actually giving me a really nice result. So that would be one of the choices. Really, really, really nice. Now, uh, you can probably tell me that I'm supposed to use my sandpaper and uh, use that sandpaper along the grain, but it's not always, you know, good idea because, yes, I can do that along the grain in this case, but I cannot do along the grain that uh, uh, a section of my carving because my movement actually go in that direction, okay? So that is uh, not going to be applicable. Let me read the, uh, the chat and I'll go back and work, okay? So, well, uh, Perry is saying, uh, give a clean spore a try. The German brand, uh, well, actually they have a plant in North Carolina. And yes, I tried that also. It's not bad at all. I like that brand. And uh, it's probably, uh, and uh, you know, I should tell you, uh, I used that uh, when I had a big machinery, like a huge uh, 48 inches uh, belt sander. That's the only sandpaper I used, okay? So I, you know, directly from the plant. So that is a really good uh, sandpaper. I'm talking about, uh, you know, that supposedly German brand, okay? That is also German brand. But again, fast tool is good for just a sanding like that because it holds the form. I like it. Okay, but I found much better solution for myself. See, the problem is um, it left a lot of uh, dust. I mean, uh, after sanding inside of my, not inside of my wood, but uh, right on the outside. See, it just leaves a lot of dust right on the surface. And I'm not sure if you're able to catch it or not, uh, but there's a lot of dust left, okay? 
And there's a reason. It actually cuts really good, beautifully. But see how much it lefts, I mean, uh, lifts on the surface. It gives really nice uh, uh, result, beautiful result. Even uh, this grid is uh, 100 and uh, just a really smooth result, beautiful result. But I don't like the idea how much uh, it lifts uh, dust on the surface, okay? So there's a much better solution. And uh, what I'm talking about, uh, it's a Mirka, okay? So let me show you what I'm talking about. That is the brand I love. Okay, so that is the brand I love. Here you go, Merca. It's also European uh, uh, brand and it's a Abra Net. Okay, so what it means, you can see it's actually translucent and that the way they designed that paper, I believe it's just a genius people. Okay, it's just a genius people. So what they do, yes, I, I, I am buying um, uh, in rolls just like that. I've got multiple rolls, uh, uh, particularly I'm just using four different grids. Uh, so this one uh, is a 320. Well, I'm showing that wrong way. This one is a 320 grid. I really love it. Uh, I've got 240 grid. I've got 400 grid. And I've got 180 grid. And I'm not going uh, less than that with the Merca, okay? Uh, there's uh, absolutely no reason, okay? But anyway, the way I'm using, why I'm buying that Merca, I'm not sure if I'm even uh, pronouncing that correctly. I have no idea. I mean, for me, it's a Mirka, okay? For you, it's a Merca or whatever. Abronet is actually the most advanced sandpaper I ever tried. And no, I'm not making money on it. It's just my personal opinion. I know some people gonna uh, say that is not the best sandpaper. Again, you have a right to think differently, but I found that paper is actually not clogs. Uh, first of all, uh, my wood, okay? So it's a really, really nice paper and we're gonna try it, okay? We're gonna try it. So I usually, uh, when I try sandpaper, Oh yeah, by the way, they also send, uh, I mean, they also sell uh, uh, just the pads like this. And I have uh, also multiple of them. And I, I listed below uh, what I bought on uh, Amazon uh, from Merca. Uh, uh, there's going to be some links, okay? So what I'm doing, uh, why I like the rolls, why I like the rolls, I can actually cut the small section and I'm using really cheap, uh, uh, scissors. I don't want to use a really expensive scissors. That is just like a dollar store uh, scissors. And uh, I mean, if even if it's uh, going to be killed, I, I'm not afraid. It's only one dollar. I can always buy another one or I can actually uh, resharpen it with no problem. But it's beautiful. I can just uh, get the small section of it. And like I said, I, I really like to start uh, with the 180 grid. And it also holds shape okay when i'm rolling it like this it just really holds the shape but the beautiful thing is it does not leave too much on the surface it's actually clogs on inside can you see that so all my dust is actually right there and i can just kind of get rid of it really quickly and continue well actually <laughs> let me show you one more time and that's 180. Yeah, I mean, some of it is still there, but not as much, okay? Not as much. Comparing to what I just showed you with the normal sandpaper by Festool. Again, I'm gonna open it and you can see, well, actually, you know what? I can just approve it uh, to you this way, right here. I can open it and see all of that dust all of that dust right inside right here okay all it takes for me just clean it a little bit and reuse it okay and it does not actually go um i mean that abrasive i mean i i, I didn't see any abrasive left on inside of uh, 
my fibers. I, I, I'm sure it's actually, you know, there, but it's not like uh, other sandpapers, okay? It also doesn't color my carving, you know, some of the sandpapers when you're using it, it actually lifts the, whatever the color, the abrasive is, it just lifts on inside, okay? So that is a 180 grit. I don't need to use this, you know, less than that. Of course, you could. I mean, absolutely, you could. Again, take a look. It's already beautiful, beautiful finish. Okay. And yes, once in a while, you probably have to clean it because once it's uh, clogged you know, you have to take it out, okay? I mean, and uh, clean that. So the next would be probably just, uh, uh, you know, 240. So that would be the next step. And here you go, that is 240. Again, uh, you know, I don't need to use a lot. I can just uh, probably cut about an inch or so. And that's a two and a half this way. And uh, about 25 millimeters is what I cut right now. Maybe a little more, maybe an inch and one eighth or, or so. And well, let me show you. See this one? The previous one, it still holds the shape. That's what I like about it, okay? So again, I'm gonna just roll it. Just roll it. And continue my sensing. And that is 240 and that is already good i mean that is already good it's gonna take uh, really nice uh, uh, nicely i should say any type of finish it should take uh, really good uh, any stain uh, you know 240 is actually really excellent uh, for the soft wood okay now 320 so that is a uh, 320 again i'm gonna cut you know smaller section and here you go, see what I said, it's just holding the shape. So that is uh, what I like about it. Hold, hold on, sorry that I was holding uh, and covering, uh, you know, with my hand, but uh, can you see that better now? Okay. And yes, did I say it's a 320, right? See, again, take a look. Take a look. It's actually... Oh, I apologize. I know exactly what you mean. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for... I covered <laughs> just my hand. Okay, but this is a 320. Okay, that is a 320. And see how beautiful, beautiful finish I'm getting. And I'm not actually getting rid of my ridges. I still keep my ridge because I'm actually sensing that right on the side of the ridge. And it keeps my ridge untouched. Okay. I think it's a really nice result. Even, uh, you know, in the other areas. I did not use uh, any 180. Well, I should probably use 180 right here first. And the final I would go, if you want to go to extreme, uh, I would go probably to 400. So 400 grit. Again, I'm using just like about maybe an inch and one eighth. So, you know, just the pieces like that. Uh, that way I can save that is a 400 grit and it gives me beautiful 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 result
okay so now uh, that is probably uh, I would say again take a look see all that dust is inside of that uh, mesh okay Abernet Merca so that is what I like but it's not the only uh, product I like by Merca okay I'm also like the sticky uh, product okay so what I mean by that I'm also uh, bought some of that stuff you know from those guys it's actually also the same brand but this is a different role uh, it's actually paper on the back but it's actually sticky okay so you can stick it and uh, if you would ask me why would you need that sticky stuff so uh, you, you know uh, you can just uh, get sometimes uh, in uh, some areas which is a really hard to reach with the stick like this okay and what you do so you can probably just uh, use that well actually you know what I got uh, too big of a piece wrap around some of the stick like that and that's because it uh, has a sticky side so you can actually get on inside and uh, you know do whatever you need to do you know just to get those uh, edges sends it and even just to get under carving sends it okay just because it has a sticky side okay so that is a 320 I'm not gonna do it I'm just uh, 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 telling you okay so although like I said uh, it's not uh, my preferred way to finish wood carving I really like the uh, tool marks and so on but still it is uh, you know if if I have a customer if I have a customer I have to do it I really have to do it and please understand and don't judge me okay let me see Dimitri привет из Краснодара uh, привет Dimitri okay hello from Sweden uh, Lynn hello hello so wonderful people so but anyway lime wood yes Paul Allen uh, said uh, the best wood called lime wood also lime wood or linden wood lipa in Russia and so on uh, but uh, I hope it makes sense people I hope it makes sense yes I did not uh, read the chat yet I gonna uh, you know uh, I gonna do a read chat right now I really apologize that you know I've got my camera uh, you know just zoomed in on a, on a hand and you didn't really see uh, too much uh, but anyway you get an idea okay you get an idea okay uh, please uh, forgive me forgive me forgive me forgive me but anyway so my point is okay the best sandpaper I found if again it's a big if if client one of my clients asks me you know to send that okay and uh, I would go probably choice number one it's just America okay so Abronet it's uh, the best for wood carvings you know for any type of wood carving projects because it does not leave any abrasive inside it does not uh, colorize uh, you know wood and uh, doesn't leave too much dust on the surface it's a lot easier to see it doesn't push you know that dust on inside of the fibers okay so as far as the sensing uh, so the choice number two I would go probably with the fast tool okay so that is uh, again my preference because it's actually really nicely when you're rolling it and that holds the shape okay so that is uh, uh, choice number two uh, choice number three doesn't really matter okay so any paper will do okay <laughs> any sand paper will do as long uh, if it doesn't colorize uh, let's say if you go to uh, Home Depot or Lowe's and buy that cheap five dollars uh, discs but they uh, you know like a yellow abrasive uh, uh, for the sandpaper it actually colorizes the wood it actually leaves uh, you know yellow marks I don't know why they paint that uh, stuff in in yellow but it does colorize it okay so now uh, the question about uh, uh, steel wool okay would I use uh, steel wool on my work uh, not on a bare wood I would not because when you're using steel wool on a bare wood it actually leaves those gray marks and it's really hard to get rid of them really hard to get rid of those uh, marks 
uh, yes, uh, if you put the Danish oil and uh, you're planning, uh, or in other Finnish also, uh, mixing with the Danish oil, uh, so you are able to use a steel wool, you're not going to be able to, I mean, you're not going to see those uh, um, uh, gray marks, okay? Let me see. Let me see, uh, uh, you know, the chat. Uh, now, Keith is saying, uh, for the flat surfaces, try scrapers. Uh, Keith, it's actually excellent point. It's actually not only for the flat surfaces. Uh, uh, you can do that even, even uh, uh, on those projects like a carving. But you don't use a scraper. Uh, well, I do have, a, I do have a, a old, old uh, tools which I bought on a garage sale really cheaply, like uh, the whole set, like 20 tools uh, for $20, uh, you know, and uh, what I did, I actually sharpened them as a scraper. And you can use that actually even on a carving, not only on a flat surface, but it's still going to scrape You know, on uh, on that surface. But another solution would be just to use uh, razor blades. Okay, just the normal razor bla uh, blades. It's exactly the same uh, idea. And I believe uh, on a school site, I'm actually showing uh, how I'm using it sometimes. If I can get <laughs> one out, <laughs> if I can get one out. So that is just a razor blade. Although it's uh, oily, gotta be careful. Uh, wipe it first with some kind of napkin or something like that okay it is little more dangerous uh, than uh, other scrapers but it's also working good even on the wood carving see it just uh, scrapes nicely see how nice surface it leaves I'm not sure if you're able to see that or not but anyway it does it just uh, scrapes uh, really nicely And yes, on a flat surface, I would prefer just a scraper. On a flat, absolutely. It just gives a much more superior finish than any sandpaper. But see, even here, see how nice a uh, finish is left? I'm not sure if you're able to see that or not. But be mindful of uh, grain direction when you're using scrapers right here. But it actually does the trick. It does the trick. Now, after, uh, after what uh, you would do, after you sand it or scrape it, doesn't really matter if you scrape it or sand it, uh, you burnish it. And uh, what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the metal on a wood because there is actually some burnishers uh, we, you can use any tools actually if you want to use uh, just the metal and just to kind of push those fibers in but it's not the best way uh, to burnish it okay the best way to burnish it just to use a uh, wood okay wood on wood is the best burnisher and you can just achieve really beautiful shiny result see that But if you burnish it, you better finish it really quickly with some kind of X or shellac. Otherwise, it's not going to stay there. See how beautiful result it gives me? Much better than any metal. Can you see that? It's almost like uh, really shiny. And I did not use any sandpaper on this side, by the way. I use sandpaper right here. And uh, especially after sandpaper, it would be really, 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 really nice also. And yes, it is better to use uh, uh, softer wood, like uh, lime wood or basswood in this case, even for burnishing. But see, beautiful result. 
beautiful result. Of course, that is not the best shape. I just showed you an example, but you can see probably just how nicely it gives, uh, you know, sh it, it, it's actually really shiny right now. And let me see if I can burnish it anywhere else. And I'm pretty sure I can burnish anywhere. So hope it uh, helps. Okay, let me read a little more. So uh, I'm, uh, there's a question, what grid sandpaper would it be equivalent? Okay, Alex, are you, are you talking about, uh, I, uh, if it's a sand, I, I'm not sure if I quite understood the question, okay? If it's a sandpaper, I go 182, 43, 20, and 400, okay? If I'm just uh, using a, a, a scraper, uh, it gives you, uh, uh, there's uh, no comparison, you can get, uh, you know the shiny surface it's just like you know 600 or 4000 grit that just gives you a really beautiful uh, result okay uh, salsa is asking what about uh, rasps and so on that is a subject of uh, future videos i'm going to show you absolutely uh, next time let me see okay uh okay i use a sharpened use dental tools uh, for mini scrapers uh, uh yeah i mean uh, I, i've got some of uh, those uh tools also you know the dental tools uh, uh you can use it but i'll i'll, I'll talk uh, about the different techniques uh, in the next and future videos okay by the way if you do have a if you do have a, other questions about wood carving related to wood carving uh, please leave a comment uh, even after the live stream so I'll be able to check them read them and try to make a video specifically based on that question uh, so as far as the rasps and uh, riffles and so on uh, you know I'll, I'll talk about like I said in future uh, it's not subject of today so today is just the sandpaper I'm gonna just uh, uh, say one more time so my preferent uh, my pref preferred sandpaper is a murka second choice is a fast tool the third choice any sandpaper will do okay i would suggest highly highly suggest not to use any tools after you send you know your work but even if you use your tools after sensing process don't be afraid just buff it reshape it resharpen it okay so have a wonderful day people today is a memorial day blessings to all of you stay safe okay stay safe and um, give me some love okay don't forget to give me some love like the video subscribe if you're not subscribed yet and uh, hit that bell notification all right get that bell notification uh, also if you are uh, on a social media like uh, Facebook or uh, Instagram uh, please follow me Wood Carver Grabovetsky I would really appreciate Wood Carver Grabovetsky okay thank you very much wonderful people